Hello everyone, this is Claudio, here to bring you a small little tutorial that I stumbled upon on the interwebs, internets, when it comes to uh, Battlefield 4. A lot of you guys are getting good frames per second, even though, uh, even on 500 series and video cards, but there's been a lot of complaints as to micro stuttering and jittering in gameplay, even in the campaign, um, in the campaign mode, there was uh, a couple of uh, moments, instances in uh, the Siege of Shanghai level where last night before doing this little method I was getting anywhere from 5 to 10 frames per second and it was it was 100% unplayable so I can only imagine the stuttering pr issues that uh, persist in multiplayer so it's very simple uh, according to some users on the internet, DICE has left out some DirectX files into Battlefield 4 and so you have to manually install them yourself. So let me take you on a tour, okay? So here we go. So I have uh, several, um, I have several drives in my computer and I have my Battlefield 4 and all Origin games in my E drive, but uh, follow me for you guys, it should be in your C drive if you only have one drive. So. Uh, basically, it is under, uh, you go to your Battlefield Origin Games folder, right? You know, if it was your C, it'll be like uh, Program Files 86, and you go on and, you know, uh, go on uh, about that way. But for me, it's in my E drive, so I go to E, Drive, I go to uh, Origin Games, Battlefield 4, Installer, under, underscore Installer, DirectX, which should be your second folder, and then your second folder called Redis. Go in there. And then scroll. You can see a bunch of files, dot, uh, dot .cab files, okay? Scroll all the way down until you see dxsetup.exe, all in capital letters. And you double-click on that. You accept the agreement, and you hit next, next, next. It'll install the necessary DirectX files into your Battlefield 4, and, uh, and that's it. So when you go back to... When you go back to the footage, which I'm going to go to now. So now you see me in-game now. Before, even when I was running, it was like micro shuttering, jittering. It, it's almost as if, let me try my best to mimic the movement. It would be forward, back, forward, back, but, but like a, at a much faster pace, correct? And uh, right now, I'm uh, with DX Story running. And uh, let me show you my, I have a, a GTX 670, 2 gigs of RAM, gigabyte. Um, an i7 3770k so I have a pretty substantial PC I mean there's other PCs out there that are much beefier than mine but for those that are running the similar setup you know which whether you have a 650 660 670 and a, and a nice uh, quad core um, processor right for Nvidia and Intel I mean these should be your uh, your um, options when it comes to when it comes to getting better frames, but like that little trick that I showed you would get rid of the micro stuttering and, and the jittering. Now, as far as gameplay is concerned, I turned, uh, where is it? Uh, a raw mouse input, I, I keep have it on, and then uh, vibration on or off, it doesn't matter how, how you want it. So as far as video is concerned, I turn blur all the way off. Uh, you don't need blur, especially in a um, in a multiplayer setting, okay? And uh, V-Sync is off here as well. Everything else is to your discretion. And I have custom, um, I have custom setup. And let me show you my setups. Texture quality, from texture quality all the way to post-processing quality, I have it all in ultra. Mesh and terrain quality on medium, terrain decoration on ultra. Anti-alias deferred, I have that off. That's a big, big resource hog uh, on your GPU. And it's, uh, I give you the biggest hit in performance. And uh, anti-alias and post, which is, um, I, I, I forget uh, the actual, the, the meaning behind that, but it is done after every frame is rendered, and then the anti-aliasing, uh, the anti-aliasing is applied right after the GPU renders each frame. So that is um, actually pretty useful, and it takes care of a lot of jagged edges in your shadows, but it is not a huge performance hog, so keep that on high. And in ambient inclusion, I don't need it, especially, again, once again, on a, um, on a multiplayer setting, you don't need it. It's not that important, unless you're doing, you know, your... Um, you're capturing footage for machinimas and stuff like that, little films. Then, of course, you know you're gonna um, you're gonna do everything you can to make it look very pretty, right? So you can have that off. Now, if you're running anywhere between a 680 
or above or you're in already in the 700 series i mean you could have this completely ultra maxed out and you're going to be getting over at least over 90 frames per second but remember it doesn't matter if you only have a 60 megahertz monitor if you have a 120 or 144 then all of those settings you know running more than 60 frames per second are going to come to your advantage and you're going to see it and you're going to feel it you're going to feel the difference in frames especially so right now I can't literally visually see more than 60 because of this monitor is capped at 60 megahertz, but I can definitely feel in the movement, the 90, the 100, the 110, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So I hope this video helped you out a little bit, you know, with your Battlefield 4 woes and, you know, every every Battlefield during launch, it's, it's a little messy. Last night there was a 650 uh, Meg update nobody still knows and dice hasn't said anything as to what that pertains to that update that happened like around uh, 5 30 in the morning eastern standard time i'm i'm pretty i'm more than sure that most of you already got that update but uh just let me know what you guys think post your uh, your specs and your comments to see if that little trick that i showed you in the beginning the dx setup.exe trick will get rid of the micro stuttering and the jittering in your gameplay once again this is claudio and i hope to see you in the next battlefield video